Hi, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and I want to let you know about some changes I've made in the website. First, there's a lot more content. I have over 160 archived Chalk Talks, so if you like my Chalk Talks, then you're going to love going online. Also, I've reduced the subscription pricing, so it's even more affordable to become an ECG expert. Finally, I'm going to offer an advanced membership level. That's going to have access to a growing library of really cool video tutorials that I think you're going to love. Oh, but there's one more thing. Because you found me on YouTube, I'd like to offer you 25% off your first month's membership fee if you just use the promo code shown on the screen. So that's it. Give it a try, and I think you'll agree that ECG Academy is the world's best online ECG training program. Well, here's a recent Chalk Talk that I'd like to share with my YouTube subscribers. So let's get going. Looking down here at the rhythm strip, we can see the forest is quite regular. And uh, what's the rate? If we count off boxes, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, just about 50 beats per minute. In fact, if you see that the QRS is hanging pretty close to the heavy line, so maybe it's like 49 beats per minute. So let's look for P waves in front of each QRS. You know, there do appear to be P waves in front of the QRSs. We'll look at the P wave axis. It's up in one in AVF. And so it looks like uh, we can call the rhythm sinus bradycardia because after all, it's less than 50 beats per minute and it's coming from the region of the sinus node. We can take a look at the PR interval right here at the first beat and it looks like it's less than one large box. In fact, I counted out to be about 180 milliseconds. So that's pretty normal. And the QRS is isoelectric in AVF. So that gives us an axis of just about zero degrees. So that's normal. If we look at the precordial leads, examine the QRS complexes, we see very large S waves in V1 and V2, and the R waves progress fairly normally. There's a tall R in V4, so the transition point is V4, but again, you've got large voltage here. So what's the voltage criteria for LVH? Well, if we add up V1 plus V5 or V2 plus V6, and if it adds up to more than seven boxes, then voltage criteria for LVH is present. So I see four boxes here, and I see another four boxes here that makes eight. And so we can say that LVH is present. Looking for other criteria for LVH, we do not see left axis deviation. We do not see left atrial abnormalities. We do not see ST strain changes. That would be ST segments that deviate in the opposite direction from the QRS complex. Although we, there is a little bit of ST elevation in V1 through V3, that's kind of normal in someone with this much voltage. And going back to the limb leads, just uh, to be complete, look at anatomy anatomical regions. The lateral leads look fine. The inferior leads look a little funny. Lead 3 has an inverted T wave, but that's normal when your QRS complex is negative. But AVF has kind of a biphasic T wave, and that's just a nonspecific finding. So some people would read it as nonspecific T wave abnormalities, but since it's only one lead, a lot of cardiologists would just kind of shrug it off and not mention it, especially if this was a young person. Well, as Steve Jobs used to say, there's one more thing. I don't know if anybody noticed, and if you did, congratulations. But when you looked at the forest and you saw that it was regular, did anybody bother to look at the trees? Look at each individual PQRS and see if there's a difference. And what you may have noticed is that when you get out here, the PR interval is getting shorter. Notice this was about 180, and this is maybe 160. And when you get all the way down here, the PR interval is barely 140 milliseconds. In fact, the P wave and the QRS complex are almost on top of each other. How could that be? I mean, we know about second degree type 1 AV block where the P wave gets longer before a dropped beat. And that's because of the way the AV node behaves when the atrial rate is too fast and the AV node can't keep up with it, right? We call it decremental conduction. But this is like reverse decremental conduction, isn't it? The AV node almost seems to be getting better as time goes on. Can it be? Is that the answer? Is the AV node just kind of improving? Well, you have to think of the physiology. The job of the AV node is to delay the signal long enough for the atria to contract and to get the blood across the AV valves. So the AV node will generally not suddenly start conducting rapidly. And what you need to understand is the fact that the PR is getting shorter here means that this QRS complex did not come from this P wave. Well, if it didn't, where did it come from? It kind of seems similar to the QRS complexes in the beginning, except for one thing. 
If you notice, the STs are a little saggy looking, and the T waves are a little bit more biphasic back here on this side of the tracing than they are on this side of the tracing. And that's because these beats are junctional beats. They are arising from the AV junction, and sometimes what can happen with junctional beats is they have a very, very slight bit of aberrancy. Well, let's compare the rates of the atrial rhythm and this junctional rhythm. If we look at the P2P -P interval and compare it to the R to R interval, the P2P interval is really quite stable throughout this whole tracing. It's not that the sinus node slows down and it forces the AV junction to start to fire as an escape rhythm. Because when I put the calipers on the QRS complexes, the QRS complexes are regular as well. And they're virtually the same rate. But they can't be the same rate, because after all, the PR is getting shorter. If you think about it, if this PR is 180 and this PR is 140, the PR only changed about 40 milliseconds over the course of six beats or so. So each beat is changing less than 10 milliseconds seconds, which is practically imperceptible. You can't really measure that kind of interval difference on a regular ECG tracing with calipers. But what you have here is an unusual finding, and it's known as isorhythmic AV dissociation. Now, what does that mean? It means that AV dissociation is present, meaning the ventricular rate is faster than the atrial rate, and the ventricles are overtaking the atria. That's why the PR is actually getting shorter, because the QRSs are coming sooner and sooner. So it's AV dissociation, since the Vs are faster than the As, but what isorhythmic means is that they're going at more or less the same rate. So it's kind of hard to tell that AV dissociation is present. You can only notice it if you look from beat to beat and notice subtle changes in the PR interval. And sometimes what will happen is over time, the PR will get longer again if you had a longer rhythm strip. So this is a really cool finding. And, and if you see this, you can point it out to your friends and show it off at cocktail parties, and people will think you're really an ECG expert. <laughs> you must subscribe to ECG Academy. Well, I hope this was fun for you. It was a blast for me. And until next week, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.